Well, I've been speaking about uh, globe, the global impact on the South African economy and I think South Africa is undergoing substantial domestic political change and I might add economic change as well. But we also have to take into account some of the major global factors that are really impacting upon us. For example, higher interest rates in the United States, a stronger US dollar, higher oil prices. Now these are global factors that uh, affect all sorts of emerging markets across the world, but certainly in the South African case we are going to be buffeted by these factors. Alongside, of course, substantial change in South Africa, a changing political environment with fresh leadership, but uh, an economy that remains very, very sluggish and almost stagnant in terms of growth prospects. Uh, and I think for the next uh, short while, perhaps for the next year or so, we aren't going to see meaningful improvements in the South African economy. Uh, systems have to change, personalities have to change, and policy really needs to be fleshed out to a much greater degree before we see an improvement in uh, gross domestic product growth, before we see any improvement in unemployment in South Africa, and I might add, we need to move into and accomplish an election, a very important election for President Ramaphosa, before I think we can start what I hope to be uh, a more rapid and more meaningful process of renewal. I think the possibility is there, I think the potential is there, and I think the land issue in particular, which has been perhaps uh, fraught for many South Africans over the last few months, looks as though it's moving to a more nuanced and balanced approach in discussion. And on the basis of that, I think we're on the cusp of seeing improvements and progress, but it is going to be, I think, more of a fasten your seatbelt year until the election and the politics is over. Well, agriculture today really is at the center of the debate within South Africa, not just from a South African point of view. Globally, huge population increases in Africa and in Southeast Asia as well mean that productivity in terms of output will have to increase almost twofold by 2050. There's pressure on land, there's pressure on farming techniques, uh, there's pressure on labor and society to accomplish this rollout of productivity. So when you look at the big picture linkages between the necessity and importance of agriculture to food security for that matter, uh, you have to then put that together uh, with the political uh, pressures that are faced by agriculture here in South Africa. And I think the message really is that uh, for the agricultural sector itself, it's not just a narrow focus about what happens in a sense on your farm or what happens in the political context in South Africa. The bigger picture is going to put tremendous pressure on agriculture to perform and the bigger picture means that agriculture must be allowed to perform and that the operating environment for agriculture has to be conducive for production to increase, for greater employment opportunities to be presented, for farmers and for those who, doesn't, who don't have access to land to feel as though they can now participate and in fact add to the production process. So I think there's tremendous opportunity uh, in the sector, but we have to look at the bigger picture all the time to tick all of the boxes to make sure we're in the right place. Uh, look, I think that if we tackle the land issue in a, in a responsible fashion, if indeed uh, the uh, committee, the parliamentary committee looking into a land redistribution or expropriation uh, deals with it in a more nuanced manner following good research, which I think is available to South Africans, uh, then I think we can really leverage the land issue to enhance food security and not only food security, but to enhance general security of tenure in South Africa. Not only for those who do not have land, but clearly also for those who do currently possess land. And that ultimately is the aim here, to make all South Africans feel a lot more secure. So I'd rather deal with the issue in a responsible way than push the issue under the carpet, or at least deal with it inefficiently, as has been done, I might add, over the last decade or so. On the basis of that, I think government understands the importance of agriculture to the domestic GDP. Uh, and I think on the basis of that, government understands that it will, it will not get investment buy-in outside or domestic unless it can secure a decent regulatory regime for the agricultural uh, industry itself. Therefore, I am more optimistic going forward because I think the matter is at last being handled. It has to be watched every step of the way. I don't think South Africans can relax until the process really unfolds further. 
uh, and that's good for all of us to make sure we police everything all the time. But fundamentally, I think given the big macro pictures uh, available, given the need for food security, given the need to grow South Africa, given the need for security for all within this country, uh, I think the industry is indeed in a good solid shape. It's got a good solid foundation. Uh, and if it can overcome this broad political regulatory side that we were about to see uh, emerge, uh, I think all can benefit on the basis of that I remain optimistic about it.